All right, we got a nice bottle of wine here, the barcode. Let's see if we can scan it. So here we're gonna switch over. We're gonna click on barcode reader. There you go, it jumps in. Now watch this, look, it's even gonna grab the barcode way down there, I mean, center it up. We'll hit go, boom, the beep, the vibration, it's done it. And look, we can do select to scan, we can do automatically scan, we can say scan multiple even. So this is the third version of the barcode reader and I wanna say Microsoft truly knocked it out of the park with this one because we have all of these different functionalities available to us. So we're gonna walk through all those today and it doesn't matter, right? You could be using it for documents like this or labels on a thing, QR codes, right? Lots of different formats are supported. Sound like fun? Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so over here at make.powerapps.com, we're gonna create ourselves a new blank app here. So we'll call this barcode and then we're just gonna choose phone and say create. Now keep in mind that this barcode reader only works in a Power Apps app. So if you're running it on Android or iOS, that is gonna work, or the Windows Power Apps client, right? Which is not very common. But what I'm really trying to say is that this scanner doesn't work on the desktop, but that's okay. If you need it to work on the desktop, then what you're gonna do is you need like a USB barcode scanner like this, and there's a video up there that will point you to how to set it up on a desktop. Assuming you're gonna use this on an iPad or a mobile device, this is your video. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to, right, add it, and you just go up here to insert, and then media, and then barcode reader, right? It's been a while since we had a video that didn't require any effort. This one's pretty close to that. So now that you've done the, added the barcode reader here, what you're gonna to wanna to probably do is insert a gallery, right? Because the barcode reader, this one, puts things out as a table, not as a single record, which is what it used to in the past. So we'll just insert a vertical gallery. We'll kind of pull it down here. We'll change it to be title and subtitle. And then for the items property, what you're going to do is the name of your barcode control. So mine is barcode reader one. We're gonna do a dot and barcodes. So that now puts a table. It throws this JSON error. I been I don't know. I don't know what this is, but it has not stopped anything from working for me. So we're just gonna close our eyes, ignore that. And now that we've done it, another great addition to this one is we can hit play, press the barcode reader. Obviously, in the play mode, it didn't read a barcode. It's telling me that, right? Hey, I can't do this for you. But what they were smart enough to do, high five Microsoft, is now it outputs sample data if you press it. So that way we can better test when we're in here, right? This is, this is a big win. As you're gonna see in our gallery here, there's two fields that come out. The first one is the type of barcode that it is. And then secondly is the value, right? So like in the case of that bottle of wine, it was a UPC code, right? Or if I scan a QR code, wherever it's stored there, right? The, the value that it scanned in. You probably don't typically care about the type, but you always care about the value. Okay, so that's, it's really as simple as that to get the data out. But of course we wanna get into all the features, right? We don't wanna just jump and be like, all right, you're done. So if you go back up here and click on the barcode reader, up here, so the text, right, that's gonna control what you see. So scan for me. And that should change that, boom. Now the barcode type is set to auto. I don't know why you'd wanna change this, but maybe you do. But there you can see the different types that it supports. And if you're not into barcodes, you're like, what do all those things mean? I don't know either, right? But there, there's different formats. So if you are using barcodes and you, you're making your own custom ones, right, you wanna make sure that you're using one of those. I know like code 128 is very common that we see a lot of UPC, right? Those are the little labels on all your items that you buy. Um, you know, QR codes, little matrixy things. So there's a lot of different ones there. We're not gonna get into those, they don't matter. The key here is that you're probably gonna leave this at auto. Now the scanning mode, this is really cool. So look, now we can have one of three things. Automatically scan, so if you do that, basically the first barcode that it sees when you turn on the camera, is just gonna grab it. Select the scan, that's what you just saw me demo, that was where we had it, it said, hey, here's a barcode, but I had to press the green button to grab it. And then scan multiple, so instead of doing a single scan, it's gonna let us mul scan multiple ones using that same green button method. Now, you're like, hey, I wanna test this out, okay? Here's one of the first tricks I'm going to offer you for the day. So, if you look at this, right, if we go here into the scanning mode, you're like, well, select the scan, that's just some text, change it to something else, automatically scan. Look at this. So there's it saying that, hey, there's actually a, a, an enum, enum object here that has got those, right? So watch this, this is so cool. This is why it's fun to be, I have, I, I wanna make sure we all learn something here. We're gonna add a drop down real quick. In our drop down, we're going to set this to square bracket and, and then we're going to paste that in and then we're gonna do dot automatically scan, comma, paste that in, dot scan multiple, 
comma, paste that in, select the scan. Close our square bracket, right? Oh, not a curly bracket, a square bracket. So now we got a drop down with those three values in it. Go back up here, scanning mode. Right then today, it's just text. It's just a fi fancy way to get there. Get rid of this, type in drop down one, dot selected, oh, power apps, dot selected, dot value. And so that is going to let you change the mode, right? When you're trying to test and prove out things, like, like me, right? Like I just got this thing dropped in my lap. I had to figure out how it worked. Well, this was the fastest way for me to be able to test the different modes and see how they behave. But look, we got enough stuff, right? Like, let's, let's, let's test this puppy. So let's take it. Let's, uh, we gave it, gave it a name called barcode. Let's publish out our changes, right? That's going to save it and publish it. And then we'll be able to open it up on my mobile phone, right? To do a true test, we want to open it on my phone, right? Because if we click it in the browser here, it's just dumping data. All right, so we'll switch over to my phone real quick. Actually, let me show you one other trick. So it might take five minutes to show up on my phone. I ain't got five minutes, right? My wife is upstairs waiting on me to leave. We got to go places. So one of the things I will do, go here to share. This takes over here. Obviously, it's already shared with me. I don't need to do that. But there's the link, right? If I want to copy this, I'm then going to go into Teams, and I'm not going to show you this part, but I'm going to go into Teams, and I'm going to paste this link to myself and Teams, right? So Teams, you can chat with yourself. So now on my phone, if we look in here, right there at the bottom, there is the link I just pasted myself. So if I click on that, this will force our barcode app to open right away. So I didn't have to wait for it. So this is one of those things I do to make my life easier. All right, so now we've got our app. And so now what can we do here? So if we start with our automatically scan, right? We haven't seen this one before. So we say scan for me. What you're going to see is that now, as soon as I put something in front of it, it scanned it, right? I didn't have to press any buttons. I didn't have to do nothing. As soon as it found a barcode, it beeped, it went, and it took me back here. So that's the first one, right? Automatically scan. We've had a lot of requests for this. People don't want to click scan. They just want to put the barcode and have it go. There you go. Secondly, we want to look at select a scan. This is the one we saw in the intro. So if we say scan for me now, what we have to do, if we grab something different here, or we just grab the same thing, then if we come in here, notice that it is grabbing it, but it's not going to keep it until we press the green button. Before we click the green button though, what if it's way down there and I can't quite see it? I can use my camera controls so I can zoom in better. I can zoom way out, that's never gonna work. We'll zoom back in and it is found it again. Also, I can turn the flashlight on, right? So use the flash to, if you're in a low light situation, I'm not, but we could. And so that looks good. So we'll press the button and boom, we've got the single scan, right? So both of those are just one scan. But what if we want to scan lots of things, Shane? Cool. Scan multiple. Now when you go to scan multiple, which one's going to scan for me. You're going to get that same, very similar interface. So we got to kind of find it. We're going to scan it. But it took it, but it didn't go anywhere, right? Notice a little pop up at the top. It tells you what pool information was last scanned. But now if we grab something different, we'll grab my deodorant. Who doesn't want to know what deodorant Shane uses? We'll scan that. It worked. And then of course we can also grab our bottle of wine. Same type of thing. No big deal. And if I had other label types, I could be jumping between label types. So if I had a QR code handy, I could scan a QR code just the same as I'm scanning these in the same batch, right? It wouldn't matter because we put the thing on auto. So feature wise, keep in mind here, if you look to the right of the little green button, we'll make the button turn green. So this shows you all the scan barcodes you've scanned. If you were like, hey, I don't want the deodorant to be there, we can just click in there and delete it out. And we're off and running, right? Continue scanning. Or we could then put the deodorant back in there. And now it's the third item. Yay. So we have that. Um, we also up here at the top, if you notice the little blue camera swivel. So because my phone has multiple cameras, I could swing that around. And if I was really cool and had a tattoo on my face, then we could be scanning the tattoo on my face. I don't, so we'll just switch back. We know I'm not cool, right? But there you go. So a pretty nice interface now that we're done. We just hit submit. That will put the three things there in the table. And so now it's a table of data you could put in a collection. You could save it to your data source, all those type of things that you know how to do. Okay, so there you go. There are a bunch of the cool things you can do. Now there's a couple other things. You can adjust the scanning quality. Um, I've not seen a reason to do this, but if you're trying to, you know, get more precise or, you know, deal with lower ones, like, especially like when you work in warehouses and stuff where they're dirtier things, we're going to see that. Um, so you can adjust that. Now, one thing I did find a little off-putting, I, I think I know why they did this, but you will notice if I go up here and just try to use one of the standard built-in themes today, let's just change it to red. Notice everything changes but the scan for me button. The, I'm guessing it's because there's a new theme engine, new theming engine coming out soon, so they didn't decide to make this one work with it. I don't know. 
But if you really needed to make this red, then what you could do is you could go over here and you know your standard things are here, right? So fill color. And so then we could just change this to the correct red or dark red, and then we'd be off and running, right? So you can't you can't adjust the look and feel of this. I don't you think you can't do it, but the theming does not uh, seem to take effect on that. Um, other things to keep in mind with this, if you wanted to make it use that front camera, right, by default. So down here, we're going to have, um, what is it it's called? Prefer front camera. So that would make it use a front camera to begin with instead of the rear camera. So that would work. Also down here, um, you've got vibrate on scan. So if you want to set that right, that is true. You can turn that on or off. And the same thing is held for uh, beep on scan. It's got a property as well, right? Remember, anytime I'm digging in a new control, I'm looking over here, right? Because like best I can tell, like the beep stuff isn't over here anywhere. Maybe it's hidden somewhere. I haven't found it. Um, but so looking through these one by one is kind of how I figured out what the different things are doing. And then, you know, you've got the data, right? It's this barcode reader one dot barcodes. I'm showing it to you in a gallery so you can see it, but it's just table data. So if you needed to take all this UPCs that you scan and combine them, what would you do? Right? You would just have yourself like a label here and you would say, um, concat barcode reader one dot barcodes. And then what field would you want to do? You'd want to concat the value field, not the validate field, the value field, and then maybe separate them by a semicolon. And so then now if you had four UPC codes, it'd be UPC code, semicolon, UPC code, right? Obviously the, uh, the sample data only does one, but that would be how you'd combine that stuff. And, or you could use like a for all or a bulk patch to push all this data out to your data source. Right? What you do at this point, I'm gonna leave that up to you, but just wanted to kind of remind you, right? There's the data. And that's really all I've got for today, right? Barcode scanners, we see a lot of these. People are doing inventory apps and, you know, check-in apps and different types of things where they don't want people to have to get on the phone and type with their little fingers. They're just grabbing the information with barcodes, right? Cause like, I mean, if I can make it, I went to some random website, made a little barcode label here, you can do it too. And that's all I got for today. Thoughts, comments, how are you guys using the barcode things? Leave them below, right? I will give you a little hint. I'm working on a very large app that I'm gonna show you guys very soon that has this built into it. And that's why I decided to pull this little piece out and make it its own video. Yeah, and with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day.